Earlier this week, I did a video which focused on the issues I see in this current Manchester United team that I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has to fix. But this video is going to come from a completely different angle. This summer was supposed to be when United started their rebuild under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But what was Solskjaer able to achieve? Did that rebuild start this summer? What I want to do in this video is outline exactly why there are so many more positives than negatives going into this season for United and why I think this rebuild truly has started under Solskjaer. Now, if you are new to United People's TV, make sure you subscribe. But let's start talking about this one. What I'm going to do in this video is focus on it in two parts. Part one, looking at the old, what happened, who left this summer, and looking at the new, what did Solskjaer bring in? And the first player you've got to start with is Marouane Fellaini back in January. Solskjaer had only been a manager for a couple of months, but he made a real statement in getting rid of Fellaini, a player who, for a lot of United fans, symbolised everything that was wrong with the style of football that we have been playing for years since Moyes came in. Solskjaer got rid of Fellaini straight away. That was cutthroat and a sort of example of what was to come. Next on the list was Antonio Valencia, who Solskjaer didn't renew the contract of. And he left with plenty of dignity, plenty of respect, but all United fans had seen the decline that had happened with Valencia and realised that he had to be moved on. But he still played so often under previous managers, but not Solskjaer. He may have been the captain by name, but he was shown the door and he left the club. And again, like Fellaini, it was another big step in the right direction. Then the summer came along and Solskjaer followed through on a certain set of words he said after United's humiliating defeat to Everton at Goodison Park. I'm going to be successful here. And there are players there that won't be part of that successful team. But there are players there that, of course, many of these uh, do have it. Suffice to say, Solskjaer wasn't lying. In no particular order, five more players left the club. Romelu Lukaku was one of them. Now, the Lukaku situation was messy. It was ugly. I didn't really like how it happened, and it happened very late, but United got rid of a player I feel never truly suited United. I think Lukaku was good in some respects, but he just didn't suit this United style that Solskjaer is bringing in. And Solskjaer could have held on to Lukaku. We could have had an option from the bench this year, but he didn't. And he made a real statement in doing that as well, just with Fellaini. He wants to bring in a certain style of football, and he is sticking to it. So I absolutely agree that letting Lukaku leave was the right move. Should be a sign of replacement? I think had we completed the business earlier in the summer, we probably would have. But Solskjaer has put his faith in Greenwood to come through with some goals and from Martial and Rashford, who both definitely need to improve. But Lukaku being sold, I think that was another step in the right direction. And Matteo Darmian followed Lukaku out of the door as well. He joined Palmer on a permanent deal. Now Darmian... I thought we'd signed a new Gary Neville when he played his first few games. But ever since that game at Arsenal, you know, when we were like 2-3 nil down in the first 20 minutes. That was the start of Darmian's downfall and he fell off a cliff and never really recovered until that 10 out of 10 performance in the Europa League final against Ajax. Darmian being sold was needed. He wasn't good enough to play for United. And there were other players that I would rather see play ahead of Darmian. And Solskjaer felt the same. So like Lukaku, Darmian was sold. And again, the right decision. Then there was Alexis Sanchez. And I said it so many times this summer, but I felt that Sanchez leaving the club was the single most important bits of business that we had to get done if this rebuild was truly going to begin. And clearly the club agrees because we're paying 150 grand a week for Sanchez not to play for United. That is how much... United and Solskjaer wanted to get rid of Sanchez. For me, he symbolised everything that is wrong with the signings that we have made post-Fergie. Those overpaid celebrities, I suppose you would call them, because they are comfortable and they are not hard-working, not like the likes of James, Wan-Bissaka and Maguire, which I'll get onto later. But Sanchez leaving, for me, was a crucial aspect because he brought a money disease into the club. Players then were focused on the money. Maybe he wasn't the only example of it, and he certainly wasn't the first one. But Sanchez leaving was such a crucial aspect that I'm delighted. Even if we're paying money every week for him not to play for us, I think that was an absolutely massive move by Solskjaer. Chris Smalling, he also followed Sanchez, Lukaku and Darmian out of the door. And with Smalling, 
was a major, major statement, I think, by Solskjaer, because he could have kept Smalling at the club. Arguably, he was the third best centre-back at the club behind Lindelof and Maguire. But instead, Solskjaer has put his faith in Tuanzebe to be that third choice and let Smalling go. And Smalling, Jones and Rojo all needed to leave United in whatever order. And for me, it's another P. I I wouldn't call Smalling Deadwood, but I didn't have any faith in him as a sort of modern-day centre-back. I think he'll go on to be very good at Roma. A bit like Johnny Evans went on to be fantastic at Leicester and West Brom. But Smalling leaving is a right thing. A right move for me, as far as I'm concerned anyway. Because it brings Tuanzebe through. It shows the faith in the youth that Solskjaer has. And it's another player from the old guard who are leaving. And again, I don't think that can be considered a bad move by Solskjaer. The one move that maybe some will have question marks over is Ander Herrera joining PSG on a free transfer. But again, this is a major statement from United and from Solskjaer because Herrera, the only reason he didn't sign a new contract is because we didn't offer him enough money. Sanchez brought that money issue into the club and the reason that Herrera didn't sign that deal, the reason that David De Gea still hasn't signed that deal is because of how much money Sanchez was on and other players wanted parity. And Herrera didn't deserve that. As much as I liked him as a player, it was a big statement from United that we're not going to be held to ransom by players who just want to be here for the money. And it was a big shift, I think. Letting Herrera go was sort of putting an end to that. I think. I hope so, anyway. Let's see what happens next summer. But it allowed for something different to happen this summer. For players to be signed for different reasons. Not just for shirt sales and a big name, but the right player for the right reasons. And as well as those seven players there who left the club, you see what Solskjaer has done this season. Matic, Jones, Rojo and Young. Zero Premier League starts between them. Solskjaer hasn't just got rid of Deadwood, he's frozen some of the other Deadwood out of the team as well. So it's clear already what he wants to do next summer. Get rid of Rojo, get rid of Jones, replace Matic, get rid of Young. Solskjaer for me has shown so many right steps in the right direction that shows me that this rebuild properly has started at United, certainly in terms of replacing the old with the new. And if you look at the three signings that Solskjaer made, they've all been fantastic in their own right. Dan James, a completely different type of signing that United have made recently. Young, raw, unknown, unpolished, but he's shown that he's a gem. Three Premier League goals already Hard work and sheer determination has got him those goals. Dan James is not the blueprint of a player that United want because we do need better players than Dan James. But just his ethic and his desire to actually play for United, he wants to play for United. That's such a crucial aspect in all of this. Solskjaer did it right with Dan James. And he did it right with Aaron Wan-Bissaka as well. 50 million already looks like a bargain for what is probably the best defensive right back in the league. He's transformed our right flank. He's transformed the confidence that fans have in our defence. Sure, we're still leaking goals, but that team and that defence will improve as the season goes on. But Wan-Bissaka, again, like Dan James, he wants to play for United. And so does Harry Maguire. Maguire is an absolute colossus at the back, the sort of player that we haven't had for so long. All of a sudden, we've got a back four which has got Maguire and Lindelof and wan and Sean De Gea, so much better than last year. And we've got an actual spine to the team. And most importantly with Maguire, we've got a leader, somebody who I genuinely believe can be an on-the-pitch leader for United. And again, that's something that we haven't had and is another reason why I feel this rebuild has started so well this summer. Now, sure, it could have been far better this summer. No United fan will tell you it was a 10 out of 10 summer in terms of the incomings and the outgoings. We needed a new central midfielder. We needed a new attacker in that number 10 or right wing position. But we made major steps in the right direction. And we all know Rome wasn't built in a day. And a rebuild is going to take more than one summer. But the indicators from this summer are so positive. And it's not just about the incomings, because you look at the academy graduates that Solskjaer is promoting through. Mason Greenwood, he'll be starting in the, in the sort of the Carabao Cup and the Europa League games. Hopefully he nails it there and comes into that first team in the Premier League. Garner, Gomez, Chong, 
all on the first team squad on the official website. Solskjaer really is, as I said, with Smalling going out and Twanzebe coming through and these players, he's really putting faith in the youth. And it might not work because we don't have the quality and experience to match with those young players like we did in the class of 92. Because as good as Skulls and Giggs and all that were, they had Keane and Bruce and all these experienced players to help guide them. United need to find that and find that balance. But there's just, for me, there's just so many right things that I think Solskjaer has done that they far outweigh the negatives. But as I said there, a rebuild is going to take more than one summer. So what happens next for United? What comes after this season? We're we going to see Man United replace Matic, Young, Rojo, Jones. For me, there's one player I think Solskjaer is going to be dead set on getting. That's Jadon Sancho. And he would transform our attack some more young blood into that team, but he's got the quality to match as well. He's been outrageously good with Dortmund again at the start of this Bundesliga season. But I think he's signing. Sancho does depend on getting Champions League football and it's going to be a tough task for United this year after what has been a shaky start to the season. But overall, looking at this summer and the rebuild that has started at United, we got rid of seven players none of which I am sad to see leave. So many Deadwood players were shipped out the door. So many players who weren't right for the club, Sanchez, Lukaku, were shipped out of the door. And three new players came in, in James, wan and Maguire, who want to play for United, who are showing it straight away, how good they are and how much they've improved this team and the attitude that exists in it. Now, as the season progresses, I think United will get better. Have we scored those penalties that we've missed? Everybody will probably be saying it's a good start to the season. Small, it's fine margins right now with United. But I can see the blueprint that Solskjaer is trying to implement. And I see so many more reasons to be positive than negative. Sure, I pointed out the fact that United need that tactical flexibility to beat that low block. That will come as the season progresses. But after years and years of what I would say were shit transfer windows, those seven players leaving, I call that a straight 10 out of 10. I wouldn't want any of those players to be playing for United this season. In terms of incomings, we needed more. I'll go for a 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10, 6 and a half, call it 6 and a half. We needed a central midfield. How we didn't get one is beyond me. But the foundations are there for what is the start of this rebuild. And I'm excited to see what can happen with this United team as the season progresses. But let me know what you're thinking about this summer and this United team under Solskjaer. Do you think the rebuild truly has started? Was he ruthless enough this summer with the players that he got rid of? And was he right with the signings that he made? Let me know what you think about how United is shaping up for this season in the comments below, as you always do. Now, if you are new to United People's TV, make sure you subscribe to the channel and get involved. Until next time, though, take it easy.